So thank you, Ruben, and the team of Next Nature Network to inviting me. So I want to think with you. What or imagine if we can use Mother of Pearl as a new car paint for Tesla instead of chemical paints? Or what if we can use soil bacteria to color our future textiles? Or maybe what if we can fly in this plane made from a spider composite? And these things may sound like science fiction, but as you heard today, a lot of biotechnical so solutions and adventures are coming to the markets, maybe more faster than we think. So hopefully in 10 or 20 years, we can fly with planes like this. And for me, my whole story started with seeing this jacket, and maybe for some it's familiar. It's made by Suzanne Lee, and she has a consultancy. She had a consultancy in London, and she, now she moved to London, and she's one of the founders of the Biofabricate Conference. And when I saw this jacket uh, as a first-year product design student, I was literally fascinated by it because I don't want to be the product designer that actually makes new chairs or new stools or new lamps, because we have many of them. We just need to reinvent the materials that we use for making these products. And this is where I kick-started my career in a way. And how it's made, it's actually made by bacteria and yeast in the fermentation process, so the same way as your beer you just drank on the bar is made. <coughs> and over a couple of weeks, you basically see a mat appearing on a surface, and this is actually pure cellulose. And we heard about cellulose, of course, from Pilio. But this cellulose is made by bacteria, and it's actually a byproduct of this fermentation process. So Suzanne started with this, and now I'm taking it into a new leap. And actually, if you take a, look, a closer look at this material under the microscope, it really looks like a textile. But the thing is that it's not water repellent. So if you wear this jacket and it starts to rain outside, it will drop off your body. And that's, of course, something that we don't want. Although this, this fact, uh, I really see our, our factories of the future as big tanks, big fermentation tanks, where scientists, designers, physicists all work together on these materials. And although fermentation is as old as civilization, we can now, with, with biotech, really engineer it uh, in a way that this is applic applicable in every industry. And uh, since I'm from Rotterdam, I, um, I see this harbor, of course, a lot. And this is really my future, so hopefully in 10 or 20 years we can change this whole petrochemical installations in fermentation tanks, where we ferment food, where we ferment fuels, um, well, leathers, uh, you name it, everything. And actually, I told this story once to one of the founders of Vopak, who owns one of these big tanks. And I didn't know he was that person. He was really shocked. But in the end, we had a nice evening. But yeah, it's, uh, it, that was kind of shocking for him. But hopefully, he reminds me somehow. And to, collab well, to uh, continue a bit on this, on this leather material, this year I won the Bio Art and Design Award with this team, fantastic team. We were matched with the Radboud University in Nijmegen with the mycology department. So they research um, fungus uh, in human diseases. And actually what I really would like to develop is a coating, a 100% natural coating from a fungus. And that is what we're doing at this moment. Uh, we're using this tiny mushroom. You might have seen it in nature. It's an ink cap. And actually, we're using the mycelium, so the roots that are living underground, to uh, basically combine it with the fermentation process of this leather. And what we hope is that it grows invasively through the material so that it's completely coated. Because when it's coated and when it's water repellent, more industries are interested in it. Because every, every other month, I get an email from mostly Asia if I can provide them with square meters of this water repellent material. Well, hopefully, I can in a couple of years, but not now. We need to improve this material to, in order to be ready to, to scale up. And if we take a look at nature, it has 3,8 million years of innovation. It's already there. And it sounds super cliche, but if you take a look around you, everything is designed for us. It's really the way how we, as designers and artists, translate these inventions uh, to the market. So that's what I really hope to achieve in the future. 
And at the beginning of this year, I uh, created the microbial vending machine. It was in Rotterdam in the Tent Gallery. And actually, I was nominated for a prize and asked to make a new work. And over the years, I gained experience working with microbes. But people are always a bit disgusted about it. If you say, oh, if you have a, a dress of bacteria or, or a lamp filled with algae, people are like, ooh, what's that? But actually, it's great. And I want to show people that actually, in a lot of products we daily use or drink, like beer, microbes are involved. And the microbial vending machine shows 21 products, uh, from building materials to a perfume to a day cream, that can be purchased, hopefully in 10 years, and that are much more valuable than a candy bar or a soda. And uh, what I try to explain is to, to the consumer that uh, this power that nature has is actually really beautiful and we can integrate it in a lot of industries. So in the other room, I explained all the products that were in the machines, and people could have a look at it. And actually, this was in September at the Gokbox Festival in Enschede. And this old man was really fascinating, because there was a lab hamburger inside. And he said, hmm, I would like to purchase it, actually. I'm, I'm really curious. And I was really fascinated by it, because a lot of old people are like, mm, well, there's all these new technologies, no, no, no. But he, I had a great, a great evening with him. So this is the menu. I really present this as, as a snack bar, a microbial snack bar, actually. So I integrated algae, fungi, bacteria, and enzymes in this uh, process. And I want to create the perfect mixture between like a building material, something that everyone knows. And I want to highlight two of these products. So one is the bromelain energy drink. And bromelain is actually an enzyme that is extracted from pineapple. It's also used as a meat tenderizer. And actually, the old Indians use this uh, as a medicine. And I was really fascinated by it, because young people nowadays drink a lot of energy drink, and it's full of sugars. But actually, if we go back to pineapple, we can extract this enzyme and use it as a kind of natural energy drink, because it really gives you a kick. There should be another product there, but it's not showing. Okay. Well, the other one was um, actually an acne day cream, and you know acne as the skin disease. But there are a lot of bacteria living on our skin, which is part of our natural uh, yeah, skin flora. And actually, I want to show people that makeup nowadays, what we're using, is full of well, chemicals. We've also seen that you can buy a sunscreen from uh, uh, bark, for example, from but it's not there yet. And actually, we have to go back to nature and actually treat our skin with uh, bacteria that are actually living on our skin to keep the flora in a, in, a, yeah, in a healthy way. So, yeah, the acne bacteria is, uh, of course, can cause this skin disease, but if you use it in a normal way, it's actually good for your skin. And the other thing that is inside is spider silk, and I find it really important. I already talked about this plane. So there's actually a company that is now working on a composite. And this jacket you see behind me is made by the Japanese uh, company Spiber. And it was presented three years ago on, this, on the Biofabricate conference. But what is actually really nice is that you now can purchase this jacket. Of course, it's quite expensive, but it made me really happy because it's there. You can actually buy it. And that's really important. So Adidas also collaborated with a company from Germany and created this uh, spider silk shoe. And I find it really important, although it's expensive, that it's there and you can actually wear it and that people see and believe in this. So it's the first step. We can't uh, transform the whole industry now. We just need to take little steps. And the other thing is these worms that were in there. Uh, that can eat bioplastics. There was also a big discussion about it, because what if they can digest, for example, styrofoam, they probably pull microplastics. But there are thousands of species of worms. So if we combine the right enzymes, we can actually can create this worm that can digest our plastic. So it's, it's also a discussion. I'm not saying this is the worm we need to use, but it's more a dialogue we have to start. 
And currently, the vending machine is in the Climate Museum at Utrecht Central Station. So if, you are, if your train is delayed, which will probably happen uh, because of the, the leaves, uh, then you can have a look at this uh, great museum. So Diana Scheer is there, Next Nature Network is there. So have a look. The other project I'm working on is this fantastic marine organism. Uh, it's called the Flavobacterium. And this is a joint research project uh, with the TU Delft Delft, Avans University and Willem de Kooning Academy. And I'm a researcher in this project to see how we can integrate this amazing organism in our designs. And what it does, we already heard about it, is that this organism produces a structural color. So imagine a brick wall that has bricks in certain spaces. This organism also structurizes itself in order to produce this color. And actually, we are really familiar with this uh, effect because we know it from the peacock. They don't have pigments in the feathers, they just have this structural color that shines uh, in the light, and therefore we see it as a blue. Also, the morpho butterfly um, has the same principle. So every blue we see in nature is actually created by this structural color. And here you see me in one of the harbors in, in Rotterdam, because I also found out it's living there, very close to my workspace. So we harvested some successful uh, colors from the mass that you see on the right side as well. And you can see it creates a whole spectrum of colors, which is amazing, but it's in the Petri dish, of course. And our big thing that we want to research is how can we transform this bacteria from the Petri dish onto a piece of fabric. Because now everything that we are, what we're wearing is, of course, chemically treated to have it in yellow or in red. But what if we can treat a black fabric, for example, with this organism, so I can program your blouse to be blue or green or to create this pattern? So that's the big uh, research we're working on, and I'm very excited. Uh, my work is also in the vein building, so if you're around, you can actually see these organisms shine uh, over there. And this is very hard to see, but it's actually the Chanel logo. So hopefully, if someone is here in the room from Chanel, I don't think so. Um, so maybe in 10 years, we will see Chanel uh, presenting a new bag uh, with this structural color. That would be amazing. So I just want to say to you, let's grow the future together with you. Thank you very much.